Today we will take a detailed look at the history and design of one of the most powerful ships that ever existed in the galaxy far far away. On the scroll bar we get closer to the first chapter. Fasten your seatbelts and subscribe to the channel. Nordy with you, and we are starting! The Executor Class Star Dreadnought, commonly referred to as a Super Star Destroyer, was one of the most powerful vessels ever built by the Galactic Empire. While its massive size, at 19 kilometers in length, was a clear statement of the Empire's dominance, the true terror of the Executor Class lay in its vast array of weapons and advanced targeting systems, which made it one of the deadliest ships in the galaxy. The Executor Class bristled with enough firepower to take on entire fleets and devastate planetary surfaces, ensuring its place as the spearhead of Imperial naval power. The Executor Class was designed to be a multi-role capital ship, capable of dominating space battles, supporting planetary assaults, and serving as a mobile command center. As a result, its weapon systems were extensive and versatile, capable of engaging everything from starfighters to enemy capital ships. The ship's armament was spread across its massive surface, ensuring maximum coverage and making it nearly impossible for smaller ships to approach without coming under heavy fire. The primary offensive weaponry of the Executor class was its extensive array of turbolaser batteries. Turbolasers were the workhorses of the Imperial Navy, capable of firing highly concentrated energy beams that could overwhelm the shields of enemy ships and burn through their hulls. The turbolasers on the Executor class were a mix of heavy and medium variants, allowing the ship to engage targets of various sizes. Heavy turbo lasers were the Executor's primary weapons for engaging enemy capital ships and heavily armored targets. The Executor class was equipped with approximately 250 heavy turbo laser batteries, each capable of delivering immense firepower. These heavy turbo lasers had long range capabilities, allowing the Executor to engage enemy fleets from a distance, and they were powerful enough to disable or destroy most ships with a few direct hits. The batteries were typically mounted in twin or quad configurations to maximize their rate of fire and to concentrate devastating firepower on single targets. The Executor class also featured 200 medium turbo laser batteries, which were more effective against smaller capital ships, cruisers, and larger starfighters. These medium turbo lasers had a faster rate of fire compared to the heavy variants and were more versatile in targeting a wider array of threats. They provided additional coverage and allowed the Executor to fend off attacks from multiple vectors, making it difficult for enemy ships to find a weak spot. The turbo laser batteries were distributed across the ship's dorsal and ventral surfaces, with many positioned along the edge of the wedge-shaped hull, allowing for broadside attacks and forward-facing volleys that could lay waste to enemy formations. In addition to turbo lasers, the Executor class was outfitted with ion cannons, which played a critical role in its combat strategy. Ion cannons were non-lethal energy weapons that disrupted the electronic systems of enemy ships, rendering them defenseless and immobilized without destroying them outright. The Executor class was equipped with 250 ion cannon batteries, strategically placed to disable enemy vessels before they could pose a significant threat. These weapons were particularly effective against ships with advanced shields, as ion cannons could bypass shield generators and cause electrical overloads in a ship's systems. Once disabled by ion fire, enemy ships could be boarded, captured, or destroyed at the Executor's leisure. The combination of ion cannons and turbo lasers allowed the Executor class to subdue or eliminate enemy fleets through a combination of brute force and precision disablement. In battle, an enemy ship might first be targeted by ion cannons to knock out its shields and engines, leaving it vulnerable to the heavy turbo lasers that would then finish it off. One of the defining features of the Executor class was its complement of super-heavy turbo lasers, which were reserved for engaging the largest and most heavily armored enemy ships, space stations, or planetary targets. The Executor class carried 50 super-heavy turbo laser batteries, each capable of dealing catastrophic damage to anything in its sights. These weapons were significantly larger and more powerful than standard turbo lasers, delivering a single, devastating burst of energy capable of breaking through even the strongest enemy shields. They were often used to deliver the killing blow to enemy capital ships or to level surface targets on planets during bombardment missions. These weapons were typically positioned along the ship's forward arc, giving the Executor class the ability to focus intense firepower on targets directly in front of it. In combat, these super-heavy turbo lasers were devastating, capable of destroying or crippling enemy ships in a single volley. However, they had a slower rate of fire compared to other turbo lasers, and were used primarily for high-value targets. To protect against smaller threats, such as starfighters and incoming missiles, the Executor class was equipped with an extensive point-defense network, 
This network ensured that the ship could defend itself from swarms of smaller craft that might otherwise exploit its slower speed and large size. The Executor class featured 500 laser cannons, which were smaller and faster firing than turbo lasers. These weapons were specifically designed for anti-starfighter operations, capable of quickly tracking and firing on fast-moving targets, positioned along the edges of the ship and near vulnerable areas such as hangar bays and shield generators. The laser cannons created a protective web around the vessel. In addition to its offensive and defensive weapons, the Executor class was fitted with tractor beam projectors designed to seize and hold enemy ships in place. These projectors were primarily used to prevent smaller ships from escaping or to pull enemy ships into position for destruction. The ship housed 40 tractor beam projectors, and they were often used in tandem with turbo lasers to ensnare and eliminate smaller vessels or corvettes attempting to evade the ship's firepower. Complementing the turbo laser and ion cannon systems, the Executor class also had a formidable array of missile and torpedo launchers, giving it long-range high-damage capabilities against both capital ships and stationary targets. The ship was equipped with 100 concussion missile launchers, which fired high-velocity missiles designed to penetrate enemy shields and armor. These missiles were highly effective against capital ships, fortifications and ground targets during planetary assaults. Concussion missiles could be used to supplement turbolacer fire during fleet engagements, or to strike at critical points on enemy vessels. The Executor class also featured 50 proton torpedo launchers, which fired highly explosive torpedoes capable of immense destruction. Proton torpedoes were more powerful than concussion missiles, but slower and more difficult to evade, making them ideal for striking large, heavily shielded targets. In battle, proton torpedoes were often launched in waves, targeting enemy ships that had already been weakened by turbo laser or ion cannon fire. The Executor class relied on advanced targeting and guidance systems to effectively wield its vast arsenal. These systems allowed the ship to track and engage multiple targets simultaneously, ensuring that its firepower could be brought to bear with maximum efficiency. The ship's fire control systems were among the most advanced in the Imperial fleet, integrating sensor data from across the ship and the fleet it commanded. These systems allowed the Executor to coordinate its turbo laser and ion cannon fire across vast distances, ensuring that every shot was accurate and that enemy ships were overwhelmed by a continuous barrage of energy. Fire control computers were tied directly into the ship's targeting sensors, allowing gunners to precisely lock onto targets even in the midst of chaotic fleet engagements. The Executor class was equipped with long-range targeting sensors capable of detecting and tracking enemy ships at extreme distances. These sensors were augmented by various countermeasures, including jamming systems and sensor decoys, which helped protect the ship from enemy targeting efforts. The targeting sensors were key to the ship's ability to engage enemy fleets from long distances and to provide support for the rest of the Imperial fleet. The Executor class also utilized sophisticated missile guidance systems to ensure that its concussion missiles and proton torpedoes reached their targets with pinpoint accuracy. These systems could be programmed to home in on specific enemy ships, key installations, or planetary coordinates. Additionally, the guidance systems could adapt to changing battlefield conditions, allowing missiles and torpedoes to adjust their trajectories mid-flight to avoid countermeasures or intercept new targets. The Executor-class Star Dreadnought was a devastatingly armed vessel, capable of engaging multiple enemy fleets and turning the tide of galactic conflicts. Its combination of heavy turbo lasers, ion cannons, missile launchers and point defense systems made it a nearly invincible force on the battlefield. The Executor-class could project its power across vast distances, ensuring the complete and total dominance of the Galactic Empire. The Executor-class Star Dreadnought was not only a symbol of the Empire's overwhelming military might, but also a technological marvel in propulsion engineering. Given its enormous size, 19 kilometers in length, and millions of metric tons in mass, the Executor-class required a robust and sophisticated propulsion system to achieve the level of maneuverability and speed expected from an Imperial flagship. Its engines allowed the vessel to traverse the vast distances of space pursue enemies, and engage in strategic positioning during battle. Despite its colossal scale, the intricate design and immense power of the Executor class's engines were integral to its success as a mobile command center and frontline warship. The Executor class Star Dreadnought was equipped with an advanced KDY Destroyer I-Ion engine system, developed by Quat Drive Yards, KDY, one of the Empire's leading starship manufacturers. The design of these engines was a marvel of engineering combining immense power generation with sophisticated thrust management systems. 
enabling the ship to move despite its massive size. The Executor class relied on 13 colossal primary ion engines, which were arranged in a distinctive triangular formation at the rear of the vessel. These engines were responsible for generating the bulk of the thrust needed to propel the ship through space at sublight speeds. The primary propulsion system of the Executor class was based on ion propulsion technology, which was standard across the Imperial fleet, but scaled up to an extraordinary degree for the Superstar Destroyer. Ion engines worked by ionizing gas particles and accelerating them through a magnetic field, expelling them at high velocities to create thrust. The immense size of the Executor class required an extraordinary amount of ionized gas to be processed and expelled and the ship's primary engines were capable of producing thrust levels that rivaled small space stations in terms of energy output. The combined output of these primary engines allowed the Executor class to reach speeds comparable to smaller star destroyers, despite its vastly greater mass. The precise thrust ratings were classified, but estimates suggested that the engines could generate hundreds of millions of terajoules of energy, allowing the Executor class to reach standard fleet cruising speeds and perform basic maneuvers necessary for combat. The sheer size of the engines made them vulnerable to attack, which is why they were heavily armored and shielded. The engines were encased in reinforced housings designed to absorb impacts from enemy fire, debris, and even minor collisions with space objects. In battle, the engines were protected by a combination of shield generators and point defense laser cannons, ensuring that enemy starfighters and bombers couldn't easily exploit the ship's rear as a weak point. While the primary engines provided the Executor class with forward thrust and acceleration, the ship also relied on an extensive network of maneuvering thrusters to adjust its trajectory and orientation. Given the massive size of the ship, precision maneuvering was an immense challenge, especially during combat or in dense star systems. The Executor class was equipped with hundreds of lateral and dorsal thrusters, which were distributed across the hull. These smaller ion engines provided the ship with the ability to make fine adjustments to its position, rotate, and change direction. These thrusters were vital for positioning the ship during fleet engagements, where precision could mean the difference between victory and disaster. Located along the ship's belly and dorsal surface, these thrusters allowed the executor to adjust its pitch, enabling it to ascend or descend relative to other ships or orbital bodies. Given the ship's role as a command vessel, it was often necessary for it to maintain specific tactical positions in battle, and the ventral and dorsal thrusters allowed it to do so with precision. These thrusters were controlled by advanced computers that calculated the precise amount of thrust needed from each to execute complex maneuvers. Even minor movements required careful coordination due to the ship's enormous inertia. In addition to its sublight propulsion, the Executor class was fitted with a Class I hyperdrive, one of the fastest hyperdrives available for a ship of its size. This hyperdrive system allowed the Executor class to travel through hyperspace crossing vast distances between star systems in relatively short periods of time. The hyperdrive was one of the key features that made the Executor class so valuable as a flagship, allowing it to respond to threats across the galaxy with unparalleled speed for a ship of its size. The Class I hyperdrive provided the Executor class with hyperspace capabilities, equivalent to smaller star destroyers and many of the Empire's most advanced ships. It was significantly faster than the hyperdrives found on most commercial and civilian vessels, allowing the Executor to outpace even some rebel capital ships during strategic pursuits. Given the critical importance of maintaining hyperdrive capability, the Executor class also featured a backup Class 8 hyperdrive, ensuring that the ship could still navigate hyperspace even if its primary hyperdrive system was damaged. The backup hyperdrive was slower and less efficient than the main system, but it allowed the ship to retreat or reposition if necessary, preventing it from being stranded in deep space. The hyperdrive system on the Executor class was connected to extensive navigational computers that could chart safe courses through hyperspace. These computers were tied into the ship's sensor arrays, allowing the crew to calculate routes while avoiding gravitational hazards such as stars, black holes, and planetary bodies. The engines of the Executor class required vast amounts of power to operate, particularly given the size and number of its ion engines. The ship was equipped with massive fusion reactors that generated the necessary energy to power the engines, weapons, and other essential systems. The primary reactors of the Executor class were among the most powerful in the Imperial Navy, capable of producing gigajoules of energy per second to meet the ship's immense demands. These reactors powered not only the engines but also the ship's shielding systems, weapons, life support and communications arrays. The fusion reactors were housed deep within the core of the ship, where they were heavily protected by layers of armor plating and internal shielding. 
the energy produced by the reactors was distributed through a complex grid of conduits that directed power to different sections of the ship. The engines were given priority in energy allocation, especially during combat or emergency situations, where the ship's ability to maneuver was critical. Sophisticated power management systems allowed the crew to divert energy between systems as needed, ensuring that the ship could maintain thrust even during sustained combat. Energy was also stored in large capacitor banks that could be drawn upon in emergency situations, allowing the ship to maintain engine power even if its reactors were temporarily offline or operating at reduced capacity. These energy reserves were crucial during battle damage scenarios, where sections of the ship might be isolated from the main reactor or when the hyperdrive needed to be activated for an emergency retreat. The immense power output of the executor class's engines generated significant heat, which had to be managed carefully to prevent system failure. The ship was equipped with extensive cooling systems, including radiators and heat sinks, that allowed it to disperse the heat generated by its reactors and ion engines. Large radiator arrays were installed across the dorsal and ventral surfaces of the executor class. These radiators dissipated heat into space, preventing the ship from overheating during extended periods of engine use or when operating at high thrust levels. The radiators were protected by armor plating, but they could be vulnerable to concentrated enemy fire making their defense a priority during combat. Given the complexity of the engine systems, the Executor class relied heavily on maintenance droids to perform repairs and upkeep on the engines. These droids were stationed in various sections of the ship and were responsible for monitoring the condition of the engines, diagnosing potential issues, and performing repairs as needed. The droids could work in tandem with the ship's engineering crews to ensure that the engines remained operational even under duress. While the Executor-class Star Dreadnought's engines were a marvel of engineering, they were not without their limitations and vulnerabilities. The sheer size of the ship meant that even with its advanced propulsion systems, it was far less maneuverable than smaller ships. In fleet engagements, the Executor-class often relied on its escort ships and fighter squadrons to defend its flanks, as it could not turn or reposition as quickly as smaller vessels. Additionally, the engines were vulnerable to concentrated attacks, particularly from starfighter assaults aimed at the rear of the ship. The destruction of key engine components could leave the ship stranded, or significantly reduce its combat effectiveness, as seen during the Battle of Endor, when the Executor's bridge was destroyed and the ship was left adrift. The engines of the Executor-class Star Dreadnought were a feat of engineering, combining immense power with advanced propulsion technologies to move one of the largest warships ever constructed. With its array of primary ion engines, maneuvering thrusters, and hyperdrive systems, the Executor class was capable of traversing the galaxy and engaging in strategic battles despite its colossal size. While its engines provided unparalleled speed and power for a vessel of its scale, they also required extensive protection and maintenance, highlighting the complexities and challenges of operating such a massive and formidable warship. The Executor-class Star Dreadnought, or Superstar Destroyer, was the epitome of Imperial engineering, combining the most advanced technology with an awe-inspiring, intimidating design. It was conceived not just as a powerful battleship, but as a mobile command center, a symbol of fear and authority, and a logistical marvel that could operate independently for long periods. Its general design reflected the Empire's philosophy of overwhelming force and dominance, while its crew composition highlighted the complexity of operating such a vast and versatile vessel. The Executor class was designed by Quat Driveyards to serve as the flagship of the Imperial Fleet, intended for strategic command, planetary assaults, and massive fleet engagements. At 19 kilometers in length, it was one of the largest starships ever constructed, dwarfing even the Imperial class star destroyers that comprised much of the Empire's naval power. Its size alone made it a symbol of terror throughout the galaxy, projecting the Emperor's will wherever it appeared. The Executor class followed the traditional wedge-shaped hull design that was characteristic of the Imperial Navy's Star Destroyers. However, the Executor's design amplified this concept on a much larger scale. The Executor's broad, wedge-shaped design allowed for maximum firepower to be concentrated forward, an essential feature in fleet engagements. The forward-facing profile ensured that a massive array of weapons could target enemies directly ahead, overwhelming them with sheer firepower. The angular design also reduced the ship's profile when viewed head-on, presenting a smaller target to enemies at a distance, while allowing the ship to cut through space efficiently. The ship's dorsal surface was dominated by an imposing superstructure that housed the command tower, communications arrays, and sensor suites. The command tower itself was a towering structure that provided the bridge crew with a commanding view of space and surrounding ships. 
the placement of the tower on the aft section of the hull allowed for a panoramic view, which was critical for coordinating large fleet operations. The entire ship was clad in thick layers of durasteel armor plating, which protected it from enemy fire. This armor, combined with powerful energy shields, made the Executor class highly resilient to damage. The ship was designed to withstand sustained bombardment from enemy fleets, with its shields capable of absorbing immense amounts of energy before failing. The armor underneath the shields provided a second line of defense, ensuring that the ship could continue to fight even after its shields were compromised. The hull was divided into different sections, each housing distinct operational areas, crew quarters, engineering bays, hangar bays, weapon systems, and command centers. These sections were interconnected by a vast network of corridors, turbo lifts, and access points, ensuring that personnel and droids could move efficiently throughout the ship. The Executor class Star Dreadnought was built to serve as a fleet command ship, and its bridge reflected this role. Positioned atop the massive superstructure, the bridge was heavily fortified and equipped with the most advanced communications and sensor equipment in the Imperial fleet. The bridge was divided into various command stations, with each station overseeing different aspects of the ship's operation, navigation, weapons control, communications, fleet coordination, and more. The layout was designed for maximum efficiency, allowing the commanding officers to receive information quickly and make decisions in real time. The bridge also housed advanced hollow projectors that could display tactical maps and fleet formations, enabling the ship's commanders to coordinate entire battle groups. The bridge was a critical target in battle, so it was protected by heavy armor, deflector shields, and reinforced blast doors. To defend against attacks from smaller ships or bombers, point defense laser cannons were positioned around the superstructure. Despite these defenses, the bridge was a vulnerable point, as seen during the Battle of Endor, where a rebel A-Wing crashed into the Executor's bridge, leading to its destruction. The Executor class was designed to carry a vast complement of starfighters, shuttles, and landing craft. It featured multiple hangar bays located on the ventral side of the ship, each capable of housing hundreds of vessels. The hangars housed numerous TIE fighters, TIE interceptors, TIE bombers, and other support craft, providing the ship with significant space superiority capabilities. The fighters were launched through massive hangar doors and deployed in waves to engage enemy starfighters, perform bombing runs on capital ships, or provide cover during planetary assaults. In addition to starfighters, the hangars also housed Lambda-class shuttles, Sentinel-class landing craft, and AT-AT transports, which were used for troop deployments during planetary invasions. These vessels allowed the Executor class to deploy ground forces quickly and efficiently, supporting its role as an invasion command ship. The hangars were equipped with repair facilities and resupply stations, ensuring that fighters and shuttles could be maintained and relaunched during extended operations. The sheer size and complexity of the Executor class Star Dreadnought required an enormous crew to operate effectively. The vessel was designed to be self-sustaining for extended periods, allowing it to serve as a mobile command base deep in enemy territory or across vast swathes of space. The Executor class was manned by a staggering 284 personnel, including officers, gunners, engineers, technicians, support staff, and stormtroopers. The crew was responsible for every aspect of the ship's operation, from weapon systems and navigation to maintenance, life support and supply logistics. The command hierarchy on the Executor class was rigid and extensive, reflecting the authoritarian nature of the Empire. The ship was typically commanded by a Grand Admiral, Admiral, or Sith Lord, such as Darth Vader, who oversaw all strategic decisions. Beneath the commanding officer was a staff of senior officers, including fleet coordinators, tactical officers, and system specialists, each responsible for managing their respective departments. The bridge crew consisted of highly trained officers responsible for navigation, communications, and battle coordination. These individuals were in constant communication with the rest of the fleet, relaying orders, receiving tactical data, and coordinating attacks. The bridge crew worked in shifts, ensuring that the ship could operate around the clock without interruption. The ship's vast array of weapons required a specialized crew of gunners and weapons technicians to operate effectively. Gunners were stationed at control consoles throughout the ship, each responsible for a specific set of turbolasers, ion cannons, or missile launchers. They worked in coordination with the fire control officers on the bridge to ensure that the ship's weapons were aimed and fired with precision. The engineering crew on the Executor class was massive, with thousands of technicians and droids responsible for maintaining the ship's engines, power systems, shields, and life support systems. The engineers worked in shifts to perform routine maintenance, 
monitor the condition of the ship's systems, and carry out repairs during and after battle. Given the complexity of the ship's engines and reactors, the engineering crew was one of the most critical components of the ship's operation. In addition to the operational crew, the executor class carried thousands of support personnel, including medical staff, logistics officers, cooks, and droids. These individuals ensured that the crew was well-fed, healthy, and supplied with everything they needed to maintain prolonged operations. The ship's internal logistics were managed by automated systems and droids, which handled everything from resupplying weapons to maintaining life support systems. The Executor class also housed a large contingent of stormtroopers, officers and ground support personnel, totaling 38,000 troops. These forces were responsible for boarding actions, planetary assaults, and defending the ship against intruders. The stormtroopers were stationed in barracks within the ship, ready to be deployed at a moment's notice via landing craft or shuttles. The Executor also carried walkers, speeder bikes, and other ground vehicles that could be deployed during planetary operations. To assist the crew in maintaining the ship, the Executor class carried thousands of maintenance droids and combat droids. These droids were responsible for various tasks, such as repairing damaged systems, performing diagnostics, and even assisting in medical procedures. These droids were primarily responsible for maintaining the ship's internal systems, such as the engines, life support, and weapons. They could access areas of the ship that were dangerous or difficult for organic crew members to reach, ensuring that repairs could be carried out quickly and efficiently. In addition to maintenance droids, the Executor class carried a complement of combat droids designed to assist stormtroopers in repelling boarding parties or securing areas during planetary invasions. These droids were typically deployed in support of the ship's ground forces, providing additional firepower and tactical support. The living quarters aboard the Executor class varied greatly depending on the rank and role of the crew members. Senior officers and high-ranking officials enjoyed spacious private quarters with luxurious amenities, while enlisted personnel were housed in more basic accommodations. Senior officers had private cabins that were equipped with communication terminals, data stations, and personal refreshers. These quarters were located near the bridge and command areas, allowing officers quick access to their stations. The majority of the crew lived in shared barracks, with multiple bunk beds and limited personal space. The barracks were divided into sections based on crew function, gunnery, engineering, etc., and were equipped with communal refreshers and mess halls. Despite the cramped conditions, the barracks were designed to provide a reasonable level of comfort, with entertainment areas and holodecks available for off-duty relaxation. The ship was equipped with extensive medical facilities, including a medbay staffed by doctors, droids, and medical technicians. The med bay could handle everything from routine checkups to emergency surgeries, ensuring that the crew remained healthy and combat ready. It was also capable of treating combat injuries, making it a vital component of the ship's ability to endure extended engagements. The general design and crew composition of the Executor class Star Dreadnought underscored its role as the Empire's most powerful and imposing warship. With its wedge-shaped hull, heavily armored exterior, and vast array of systems and personnel. It was more than just a ship. It was a mobile city, a fortress in space, and a symbol of the Emperor's power. Manned by nearly 300,000 personnel, including officers, gunners, engineers, stormtroopers, and droids, the Executor class was capable of commanding entire fleets, engaging in planetary invasions, and overwhelming any opposition with sheer force. Its design and operation required careful coordination and expertise, making it one of the most complex and formidable vessels ever conceived. The construction of the Executor-class Star Dreadnought was a monumental undertaking in the Star Wars universe, representing the peak of Imperial ambition, engineering, and resource mobilization. Designed as a symbol of the Empire's overwhelming power, each Executor-class vessel required massive industrial resources, specialized facilities, and the coordination of vast labor forces. The construction of these superstar destroyers was shrouded in secrecy, orchestrated by some of the Empire's most powerful figures, and symbolized the Emperor's intention to solidify his rule through fear and military dominance. The genesis of the Executor-class Star Dreadnought began with the Empire's recognition that a single, massive warship could project power across the galaxy in a way that no fleet of smaller vessels could. While the Imperial-class Star Destroyers had already established the Empire's supremacy in space combat, Emperor Palpatine and his closest advisors, such as Darth Vader, desired something far larger and more intimidating, something that could serve not only as a command ship, but as a psychological weapon. 
The executor class was conceived with two primary objectives in mind, total domination in fleet engagements and the projection of fear. Designed by Quat Drive Yards, KDY, the executor class represented the pinnacle of warship design, building upon the success of earlier Star Destroyers but on a vastly larger scale. Command Vessel Unlike the smaller Star Destroyers, the Executor class was intended to function as a fleet command ship, capable of coordinating entire battle groups and serving as a mobile base of operations. This required extensive facilities for fleet coordination, advanced communication systems, and quarters for high-ranking Imperial officers. Psychological Impact The sheer scale of the ship, stretching 19 kilometers from bow to stern, was intended to strike fear into the hearts of the Empire's enemies. It served as a symbol of imperial dominance, and its appearance in a star system was often enough to force a surrender without a single shot being fired. The ship's design, with its angular wedge shape and menacing superstructure, reinforced its role as an instrument of terror. Constructing a single executor-class star dreadnought required staggering amounts of resources, metal, energy, manpower, and specialized technology that were far beyond what was necessary for even the largest Imperial-class Star Destroyer. The Empire's vast industrial complex, spanning numerous star systems, was fully mobilized to supply the raw materials and components necessary for the construction of these behemoths. The construction of an Executor-class vessel demanded astronomical quantities of Durasteel, Tibana gas, Quadrium steel, and hyperdrive components. These materials were sourced from across the galaxy, often from Imperial-controlled planets or those under heavy Imperial influence. Key worlds such as Lothal, Sullust, and Kessel were prime sources of metals and minerals used in the construction of the ship's armored hull and structural framework. Mining operations on these planets were expanded to meet the Empire's demands, often at the cost of the local populations and ecosystems. The processing of raw materials and the production of components took place on heavily industrialized worlds such as Fondor, Corellia, and Bilbringi, which were known for their massive shipyards and factory complexes. These worlds were essential to the Empire's war machine, producing everything from hyperdrive cores to the durasteel plating that would form the Executor's hull. In some cases, the Empire seized resources and equipment from independent systems or corporate sectors, often under the pretense of national security. These seizures were carefully managed to avoid arousing suspicion, though in many cases, the construction of such enormous vessels could not go entirely unnoticed. The labor required to construct an executor-class vessel was immense, involving hundreds of thousands of workers, engineers, and droids. Labor was often divided into specialized tasks, with different sectors responsible for different parts of the ship's construction. The Empire employed highly skilled engineers from Quat Drive Yards and other major shipbuilding firms to design and oversee the construction of the Executor class. These engineers were responsible for ensuring that the ship met the Emperor's exacting specifications and could function as a mobile command center, battleship, and symbol of Imperial authority. In keeping with the darker side of the Empire, much of the construction labor was carried out by slaves and prisoners, particularly on worlds such as Wobani and Despair. These laborers were often forced to work in harsh, dangerous conditions, with little regard for their safety or well-being. The use of forced labor allowed the Empire to minimize costs while maximizing output, ensuring that construction proceeded rapidly despite the enormous scope of the project. To complement human labor, the Empire employed vast numbers of construction droids, particularly in tasks that required precision and endurance. These droids worked around the clock, assembling components, welding the massive hull together, and installing the delicate systems that would power the ship's weapons, shields, and engines. The construction of an Executor-class Star Dreadnought could not be undertaken at just any shipyard. Specialized facilities were required to handle the ship's massive size and complexity. Key shipyards such as Fondor Shipyards, Quat Drive Yards, and Bill Bringy Shipyards were responsible for building these superweapons. These shipyards were among the largest and most advanced in the galaxy with entire star systems often being devoted to supporting their operations. Fondor, located in the Colonies region, was one of the most important shipbuilding facilities in the galaxy. The Fondor shipyards were a sprawling complex of orbital platforms, dry docks, and assembly yards, capable of handling the largest and most complex ships in the Imperial Navy. The construction of Darth Vader's flagship, the Executor, took place at Fondor, under conditions of extreme secrecy. To maintain secrecy during the construction of the Executor, the shipyard was placed under heightened security, with restricted access and a heavy Imperial presence. Workers and engineers were carefully monitored 
and information was compartmentalized to prevent leaks. The Empire went to great lengths to ensure that knowledge of the ship's existence and capabilities remained classified until it was ready to be revealed. The dry docks at Fondor were massive, capable of accommodating the entire length of the Executor class. These dry docks were equipped with heavy-duty cranes, construction scaffolds, and docking bays for the thousands of support ships that ferried materials and components to the construction site. Fondor's orbital platforms were designed specifically for large-scale projects like the Executor, and the shipyard had the infrastructure needed to build multiple capital ships simultaneously. Kuat Drive Yards, one of the largest and most powerful corporations in the galaxy, was another key player in the construction of the Executor class. KDY's orbital ring, known as the Kuat Ring, encircled the entire planet of Kuat and served as a massive shipbuilding facility. Many of the components for the Executor class, including its engines and weapon systems, were produced at KDY and then shipped to Fondor for final assembly. KDY specialized in producing military vessels for the Empire, and its entire operation was geared towards supporting the Imperial War Machine. The corporation had the ability to produce everything from TIE fighters to superstar destroyers, making it an indispensable part of the Executor's construction process. KDY also designed the Destroyer 1 Ion engines and many of the ship's other critical systems. KDY's leadership maintained close ties to the Imperial elite, allowing the company to secure contracts for the construction of the Executor class and other capital ships. These relationships ensured that KDY was entrusted with some of the Empire's most important and secretive projects. The construction of an Executor class Star Dreadnought followed a carefully planned assembly process, divided into multiple phases. Given the ship's enormous size, the construction was carried out in modules, with different sections of the ship being built separately and then integrated together. The ship's construction was modular, with different parts of the vessel being assembled simultaneously in different locations. For example, the engines, weapons arrays, and superstructure were constructed separately and then integrated into the ship during the later stages of assembly. The first phase of construction involved laying down the keel of the ship and assembling the framework of the hull. The skeletal structure of the Executor class was composed of reinforced durasteel, providing the ship with the strength needed to withstand the stresses of space travel and combat. Once the framework was complete, the exterior armor plating was installed, creating the distinctive wedge shape of the ship. Once the hull was completed, the superstructure, housing the command tower, bridge, communications arrays, and sensor suites, was installed. This section of the ship was designed to be heavily armored and fortified, as it housed many of the ship's critical command and control systems. The Executor class was equipped with thousands of weapon systems, including turbo lasers, ion cannons, missile launchers, and tractor beams. These weapons were installed in phases, with specialized teams responsible for ensuring that each system was correctly integrated into the ship's power grid and targeting systems. After the individual sections of the ship were constructed, they were brought together for final assembly. This involved joining the various modules together and ensuring that all of the ship's systems, engines, weapons, shields, and life support were fully operational. Once the ship was assembled, it underwent extensive testing and trials to ensure that it met the Emperor's exacting standards. During the final phase of construction, the interior of the ship was outfitted with crew quarters, command centers, and other essential facilities. The ship's life support systems, artificial gravity generators, and hyperdrive were tested to ensure that they could support the ship's massive crew complement. The final step involved installing the ship's command systems, including its advanced communication arrays, sensor suites, and battle coordination centers. These systems were essential for the Executor class to function as a fleet command ship, allowing it to coordinate the movements of entire battle groups during engagements. The construction of an Executor class Star Dreadnought was a feat of engineering on an unprecedented scale. It required the mobilization of vast resources, specialized shipyards, and a skilled labor force. The process of designing, building, and outfitting one of these colossal vessels represented the peak of Imperial industrial might. Each ship stood as a testament to the Empire's dominance, a fortress in space capable of laying waste to entire fleets and planets. The concept of using the Executor-class Star Dreadnought in the Galactic Empire's fleet operations was rooted in a strategy of overwhelming power projection and psychological warfare. These superstar destroyers were not just warships, they were tools of Imperial domination, serving multiple roles in fleet engagements, planetary assaults, and as mobile command bases. The sheer size and firepower of the Executor-class 
made it a central component of the Empire's military doctrine, embodying Emperor Palpatine's desire to maintain control over the galaxy through fear and force. The Executor-class Star Dreadnoughts were designed to be more than mere battleships. They were intended as the ultimate symbols of Imperial authority. The primary concept behind their use was based on the Empire's desire to impose its will on the galaxy, using these vessels as both physical and psychological weapons. One of the core roles of the Executor class was to function as the command and control vessel for large Imperial fleets. Given its size and the extensive command facilities it housed, the Executor class was perfectly suited to coordinate fleet maneuvers, oversee complex operations, and serve as a mobile base for Imperial leaders, including Darth Vader and the Emperor himself. This strategic function was critical in large-scale battles where coordination of hundreds of ships was necessary. The Executor class often served as the flagship of entire Imperial battle groups, leading smaller Star Destroyers, support ships, and fighter squadrons into battle. Its presence at the heart of the fleet provided centralized command and control, enabling rapid communication between units and ensuring that Imperial forces acted in concert during engagements. The ship's battle coordination centers were equipped with advanced sensor arrays, communications equipment, and holographic display systems that allowed the Executor's officers to monitor and direct fleet-wide actions in real time. This gave the Empire a significant tactical advantage, as the Executor class could orchestrate complex maneuvers and coordinate strikes with precision. Beyond space engagements, the Executor class was also integral to planetary invasions. The ship's massive complement of TIE fighters, landing craft, and ground troops made it ideal for spearheading assaults on rebel-held worlds. Its presence in orbit not only provided orbital bombardment capabilities, but also acted as a hub for coordinating ground operations. The Executor-class Star Dreadnought was not merely a weapon of war, it was a tool of psychological warfare. The Empire's doctrine relied heavily on using fear to maintain control over the galaxy, and the Executor-class was a physical manifestation of that fear. Its appearance in a system was often enough to cow local governments into submission without the need for combat. The Executor class was designed to be an imposing presence, and its arrival in a star system sent a clear message. The Empire was watching, and resistance would be crushed. The sight of the 19-kilometer-long vessel, bristling with weapons and surrounded by a fleet of star destroyers, was enough to instill terror in the hearts of enemies and allies alike. Entire planetary governments would surrender at the mere threat of its involvement. The Executor class served as a deterrent to rebellion and dissent within the galaxy. Its size, firepower, and indestructible appearance gave the impression that opposing the Empire was futile. The ship's capacity to obliterate fleets and bombard planets created a psychological impact that went beyond its actual battlefield capabilities, reinforcing the idea that the Empire was invincible. The association of the Executor class with key Imperial figures such as Darth Vader added to its role in psychological warfare. As Vader's personal flagship, the Executor became synonymous with terror, further reinforcing the image of the Empire as an unstoppable force. The Executor class was equipped with an arsenal of weapons that made it ideal for planetary sieges and orbital bombardments. Its turbolasers, ion cannons, and missile launchers were not only effective against enemy fleets, but could also be turned on planetary targets, devastating cities and military installations from orbit. The Executor class could deliver devastating bombardments on planetary surfaces, utilizing its heavy turbolaser batteries and missile launchers to flatten cities, destroy infrastructure, and eliminate military targets. This capability made it a key asset in sieges, where overwhelming firepower was necessary to break enemy resistance. In addition to bombardments, the Executor class could enforce planetary blockades. Its vast array of tractor beams and fighter squadrons allowed it to prevent enemy ships from escaping a system, effectively cutting off planets from supplies, reinforcements, or external communication. This made the ship an essential tool in the Empire's strategy of isolating and neutralizing rebellious worlds. The ship's ability to carry tens of thousands of troops and hundreds of vehicles, including AT-AT walkers, allowed it to support ground invasions directly. Once orbital dominance was established, the Executor class could deploy stormtroopers and armored divisions to conquer planets, reinforcing its role as a multi-purpose vessel in planetary warfare. In fleet battles, the Executor class was designed to be a force multiplier. Its sheer size and firepower allowed it to engage multiple enemy ships simultaneously, often acting as the centerpiece of an Imperial Armada. In this role, the Executor class was a battleship, carrier, and command ship all in one, making it a versatile and nearly indomitable force in space combat. 
The Executor class was built to dominate in battles against enemy capital ships. With its hundreds of turbo lasers and ion cannons, the ship could unleash devastating volleys that could cripple or destroy multiple Star Destroyer-sized vessels at once. Its presence on the battlefield often dictated the flow of the engagement, with enemy commanders focusing all their efforts on either avoiding or attempting to take down the Executor, usually at great cost. The Executor class carried thousands of starfighters and bombers, including TIE fighters and TIE bombers. This massive fighter complement allowed it to establish space superiority by overwhelming enemy fighter squadrons, providing close support to Imperial capital ships, and conducting precision strikes on key enemy targets. The ship's heavy weaponry, combined with its advanced sensor systems, allowed it to target and destroy enemy formations at long range. This made it particularly effective in anti-fleet operations, where the Executor class could systematically dismantle enemy battle groups, starting with support vessels and working its way through the enemy fleet until only the largest capital ships remained. As the command ship, the Executor class also controlled battlefield communications and tactics, coordinating the movements of supporting Star Destroyers, frigates, and other vessels. Its advanced communications arrays ensured that Imperial forces operated with a high degree of coordination, which was often a critical factor in the Empire's battlefield victories. Despite its immense power and versatility, the Executor-class Star Dreadnought was not without its limitations. The concept behind its use came with significant risks, particularly in terms of vulnerability, cost, and logistical support. While the Executor-class was nearly invincible in fleet combat, its size made it a large target, vulnerable to concentrated attacks. Though heavily armored and shielded, it was possible for a determined and coordinated enemy force to exploit weaknesses in its defenses. As with any large warship, the Executor class had key vulnerabilities. Its bridge and command towers, though fortified, were prime targets for enemy attacks. In addition, its massive engine banks, located at the rear of the vessel, could be damaged by precision strikes, potentially immobilizing the ship. The Rebel Alliance, in particular, adopted hit-and-run tactics designed to exploit the weaknesses of larger Imperial ships. Rebel fighters and bombers often targeted critical areas such as shield, generators, or the command tower in an attempt to disable the ship or destroy it outright. The sheer scale of the Executor class imposed significant logistical challenges. These ships required enormous amounts of fuel, maintenance, and manpower to operate effectively. Supporting an Executor-class vessel in extended campaigns strained even the Empire's considerable resources. The Executor-class had massive fuel requirements, particularly when using its hyperdrive or during prolonged operations. Keeping the ship supplied with fuel, food, and other essentials required a constant flow of supply ships and support vessels. Manned by nearly 300,000 personnel, the Executor-class needed extensive maintenance and repair to keep it operational. Crew rotations. Supply restocking and regular repairs had to be meticulously managed to ensure the ship's readiness for combat. The concept of using the Executor-class Star Dreadnought revolved around the Empire's core strategy of dominance through overwhelming force and fear. These ships were more than just warships. They were mobile fortresses, command centers, and psychological weapons that represented the might of the Imperial Navy. Whether leading fleets into battle, bombarding planets, or enforcing blockades, the Executor class was a multi-purpose vessel designed to crush the Empire's enemies, both physically and psychologically. However, their immense power came with vulnerabilities and logistical challenges that could be exploited by the galaxy's most determined rebels. The Executor class Star Dreadnought was one of the most fearsome warships in the Galactic Empire's naval arsenal and its combat history is marked by high-profile battles and moments that shaped the course of galactic conflict. From its first appearance to its ultimate destruction, the Executor class played a pivotal role in some of the most significant military engagements of the Galactic Civil War. The first ship of its class, the Executor, was conceived as a part of Emperor Palpatine's plan to maintain control over the galaxy through fear and military might. Its construction began after the Battle of Yavin, where the Rebel Alliance achieved a shocking victory by destroying the Empire's ultimate weapon, the Death Star. This defeat galvanized the Emperor to bolster his forces with more devastating weapons of war, and the Executor class was one of these solutions. The Executor, the prototype of the Executor class Star Dreadnought, was commissioned as the personal flagship of Darth Vader. The ship was built at the Quat Drive Yards, the Empire's premier shipbuilding facility, known for producing some of the largest and most powerful ships in the galaxy. 
Upon completion, the Executor was officially registered in the Imperial Navy as the flagship of Death Squadron, a fleet assigned to hunt down and destroy the Rebel Alliance. Death Squadron would become infamous throughout the galaxy, due to its association with the most ruthless and efficient elements of the Empire's military. The Executor class made its combat debut during the height of the Galactic Civil War, with the Executor herself leading a series of critical battles that demonstrated the sheer power of these superstar destroyers. One of the earliest operations involving the Executor class was Darth Vader's relentless pursuit of the Rebel Alliance following their escape from Yavin 4. As the flagship of Death Squadron, the Executor led a task force that scoured the galaxy for Rebel bases and starships. During this period, the Executor's fearsome reputation grew as it systematically crushed Rebel forces, and its mere appearance in a star system often led to the surrender of Rebel-aligned planets without a fight. The Executor's most notable early engagement was the Battle of Hoth, where it played a central role in the Imperial assault on Echo Base, the hidden headquarters of the Rebel Alliance. The Executor coordinated the Imperial fleet as it blockaded the Hoth system, preventing Rebel ships from escaping while the ground forces launched their attack. Although some Rebel forces managed to flee the system, the battle was a decisive Imperial victory, thanks in large part to the Executor's overwhelming firepower and tactical superiority. The Executor class was also deployed in numerous space battles, often serving as the spearhead of Imperial operations. The Executor's sheer size and firepower made it a devastating weapon in fleet battles. It was involved in multiple ambushes, where smaller Rebel fleets were caught off guard and quickly overwhelmed by the combined might of the Executor class and supporting Star Destroyers. These engagements typically resulted in the destruction of Rebel capital ships and the decimation of their Starfighter squadrons. Beyond direct fleet engagements, the Executor class was also used in blockade operations, where its vast fighter complement and tractor beams were employed to cut off access to key planets. This role was especially critical in containing Rebel activity, forcing enemy forces into increasingly desperate measures as their supply lines were cut, and reinforcements were unable to reach them. The most famous and consequential battle involving the Executor class star Dreadnought occurred at the Battle of Endor. This battle would ultimately determine the fate of the Galactic Empire. In an attempt to crush the Rebel Alliance once and for all, the Emperor lured the Rebellion into a trap at the second Death Star, which was under construction above the forest moon of Endor. The Executor, once again serving as Darth Vader's flagship, played a central role in this battle, leading the Imperial fleet against the Rebel forces. The ship was positioned as the ultimate command vessel, coordinating the defense of the Death Star and the space battle against the Rebel fleet. However, the battle did not unfold as the Emperor had planned. The Rebel Alliance, led by Admiral Akbar and General Lando Calrissian, launched a desperate attack on the Death Star and the Imperial fleet. Despite the Executor's overwhelming firepower, the tide of the battle began to turn against the Empire, when the Rebels managed to destroy the shield generator on Endor's surface, exposing the Death Star to attack. In the chaos of the battle, Rebel Starfighter squadrons targeted the Executor's shield generators, leaving the massive ship vulnerable. In a critical moment, a Rebel A-Wing, piloted by Arvel Krynid, crashed into the Executor's exposed command bridge, disabling the ship's control systems. With the bridge destroyed, the Executor was left adrift, unable to maneuver or defend itself. The ship, now completely uncontrolled, began to descend toward the surface of the Death Star. Moments later, the Executor collided with the Death Star's surface in a catastrophic explosion, marking the end of the most famous ship of its class. Although the original Executor was destroyed at Endor, several other Executor-class Star Dreadnoughts remained in service with the Imperial Navy. These ships continued to see action in the chaotic period following the Emperor's death, as various Imperial factions vied for control of the remnants of the Empire. Some of the surviving Executor-class vessels, such as Razor's Kiss and Iron Fist, were utilized by Imperial warlords in the post-Endor era. These ships became symbols of power for the various factions that rose to prominence during the fragmentation of the Empire. Warlord Zinj, for example, used the Iron Fist as his flagship in his bid to establish his own empire in the Outer Rim territories. Despite their power, many of these ships met similar fates to the Executor, either being destroyed in battle or decommissioned as the resources of the fragmented Empire dwindled. By the time of the Second Galactic Civil War, Few, if any, Executor-class Star Dreadnoughts remained in active service. The New Republic's focus on smaller, more maneuverable ships further diminished the role of superstar destroyers in galactic conflicts. Despite the destruction of the Executor and the gradual decline of the remaining ships in the class, 
The Executor Class Star Dreadnought left an indelible mark on galactic history. It represented the pinnacle of Imperial engineering, a weapon of terror and domination that embodied the Empire's philosophy of ruling through fear. The ship's towering presence in the galaxy made it an unforgettable symbol of the Galactic Empire's might, even after its fall. For years after the Executor's destruction, the memory of its battles and its sheer presence lingered in the minds of both the galaxy's inhabitants and the rebel forces who had fought against it. Even in defeat, the Executor remained a reminder of the Empire's vast military power and its ability to wage war on an unparalleled scale. The Executor-class Star Dreadnought was the ultimate representation of the Galactic Empire's power during the height of the Galactic Civil War. From its construction at Quat Drive Yards, to its role as Darth Vader's flagship, the Executor made an indelible impact on the war, leading some of the most important Imperial operations. Despite its eventual destruction at the Battle of Endor, the Executor class left behind a legacy of fear, power, and destruction that shaped the course of galactic events for years to come.